around there. Um, oh yeah, recording started now. Um, so yeah, um, as was said, um, I'm kind of currently a software developer working at Voltron Data, um, contributing full time to the Apache Arrow project. And before that, I've been like a data scientist, a data consultant, um, an analytical developer, but all data science kind of related things, um, mainly in R with a little bit of Python. Um, but I keep coming back to R because I, I love working in R. I love this language we have. I love the really cool tools we have um, and fantastic communities and sub-communities. Um, but another thing that's got me quite excited recently is, so I'm currently an apprentice working at Voltron um, full-time Apache Arrow. So what I wanted to do with this talk was give a bit of an introduction to Apache Arrow because I know in the past when I've when I've been to talks about a certain technology and it's all what are the new features and what's everything sometimes I just want to have this almost this overview of what is it what is it about so that's the kind of angle I'm going to go through for today so if you've already heard of Arrow and already worked with Arrow um there are other talks actually that might kind of be more your kind of thing and I will kind of reference some of those later okay so the first question then um I think we want to be asking and answering is what is Arrow? So sometimes this can get a little bit confusing for people just because people can use Arrow to refer to the overall project. People can say Arrow as in the actual R package. Um, so in general, Arrow, it's um, the project itself, it's, it's a standardized format for in-memory analytics. And there are implementations of this in loads of different programming language languages. I guess, you know, at a high level, it's for in-memory analytics and it's fast and it scales well. The idea is being able to do analytics on data that is bigger than you can fit in memory without having to load it into memory. Um, and for a more detailed technical overview, you can actually kind of read it on the um, on the site, but that's just kind of the very high level. So in terms of like what you can do in R with Arrow then, um, you can analyze larger than memory data sets without the need to maintain a database. That's one of the things that I'm gonna be demoing today. Um, you can query databases using dplyr syntax and functions from base R and tidyverse via Arrow's compute functions. So one of the things that we wanted to do is not just add another kind of syntax for people to have to learn. So if you already know how to use dplyr and use kind of fu just functions from the base R, base R and tidyverse, so packages like lubridate, string R, you know, the idea is that you should be able to do things in Arrow using that existing knowledge for the most part. Um, some of the other things that you can do in Arrow are things like you can work with data that's stored in S3 buckets. So when things are stored, you know, Amazon on cloud without actually having to download all of it first. Um, you can work with multi-file data sets without having to import them and combine them all in memory. Um, if you've got multiple things that use Arrow, the interoperability between those different things is actually really fast because of the way that the package is designed. Um, sorry, the, the actual underlying stuff is designed around um, kind of this zero copy philosophy again there's more about that in the docs and then there's things you can do from the data engineering point of view so you can have much tighter control over column types and things like that and again I can point to a talk um, that goes more into the data engineering side of it and uh, this isn't exhaustive this is just from my perspective as somebody that's done kind of quite a bit of data science type work these are the kind of things that I find kind of most interesting about what you can do in R with Arrow okay so I mentioned then um, that there are a lot of different implementations of Arrow and kind of this graphic here just kind of gives you a bit of an idea of kind of the languages. So, do you know, what? I don't even know what all of these logos are, but the point is there's loads of different things using Arrow. I mean, in terms of other projects, so I know um, Spark has a bit of Arrow integration already and there's quite a few other ones of those. But just in terms of how this works for the R package is, is the real focus today. Okay, so, um, in terms of the R package, Arrow itself, so the Arrow, the C++ Arrow implementation is kind of what powers it. Um, so one of the philosophies, I guess, behind the project is this idea that, you know, in terms of doing fast in-memory analytics and, and working with kind of data frames and those kinds of structures, this is the problem that's been solved separately across multiple different projects. And wouldn't it just be so much better and so much more efficient, perhaps, you know, to be able to share these solutions to common problems? Um, and that's kind of how this has been implemented um, in parts of the project. So there's the C++ implementation of Arrow, and then built on top of that is the R package. So the R package calls out to the C++ functions there. It adds some of its own extra functionality. So the ability, for example, to use like dplyr syntax and things like that. Um, but it's using the exact same Arrow C++ code under the hood 
that the Python module for Arrow called PyArrow Arrow is doing. And the same, I think on that diagram, I've got the Ruby and MATLAB and the C one. They're all using the same thing under the hood. And that means you'll get comparable performance between different languages. And it's just this big kind of shared ecosystem. Okay. So just a little bit more, because obviously I, I've mentioned that you can use the dplyr API, and this can be a bit of a conceptually weird thing to think about. So I guess the best way I, I thought to explain it is if you're just using the dplyr package to analyze data, then you're using the dplyr API, the, the, the code, the, um, the syntax, the functions that you use, and under the hood that uses the dplyr engine. Now, to kind of understand how Arrow works, if you've heard of the package dbplyr, um, that's a package that you can use. If you've got a SQL database, so whether that's Postgres or MySQL or whatever, the dbplyr package allows you to use all of, you know, the kind of familiar, if you use dbplyr functions like select, mutate, arrange, but use those to query data in a SQL database. And that's what dbplyr does. So it's very similar how Arrow works. Again, it's using dplyr functions, but with the Arrow engine in the back end. Okay, so if you're in one of these situations where Arrow can really help your workflow, um, it just makes it a bit easier and it's not a new thing to have to completely learn from scratch. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I've kind of mentioned um, that we've got the, um, sorry, that there's the Arrow library that's written in C++ that the R package depends on. Um, and one of the features of that is the Arrow compute functions. So these are written in C++ and in the package, there's what known as bindings between the Arrow compute functions and their base R or tidyverse equivalent. So when I, I mentioned you can use kind of functions like from string R, but in Arrow, this is what I'm talking about. And this will be a lot clearer when I kind of demonstrate this shortly. Um, but the idea is even though you're working with it in Arrow, you use the same arguments to call these functions, you expect the same outputs. Um, and we do have to add these manually. And we are adding them kind of like, you know, one at a time as we go through them. I will say if you're interested in using Arrow or you use Arrow, and there are certain tidy first functions that you would like to be able to use with Arrow that aren't already implemented, like, please, please, please open an issue. Um, you know, I can't promise anything, but I know for myself as a developer, if I've got like, a person requesting something be implemented, that is definitely going to end up going higher up in the to-do list than just, oh, we've not done that yet. So I would definitely, you know, recommend that if, if you're interested, please do open an issue for anything that will be useful. Okay, so I've, I've rambled on at you for a while there, but I, I think the best way to kind of demonstrate an R package is, is just to write some code. So that's what I'm going to do now. So um, this first demo is going to look at working with really huge data sets in memory. So this is a data set that it would be kind of very challenging, if, if not impossible, on a lot of laptops to just load it into your R session. Um, but Arrow kind of makes working with this possible. Okay, so I've got our studio there. Okay, so the data set that I'm going to be showing you is called the New York Taxi data set. And it contains data about taxi journeys in New York. So how much the ride cost, where it started and ended, and there's loads of data in this. It's, it's taxi journeys from 2009 to 2019, I think. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is load Arrow, okay? Now, because I wanna use this dplyr kind of syntax, I'm gonna load dplyr as well. Um, and I'm also going to load per. Oh, I've gotta get all the R's and per there. Okay, so um, another thing I'm gonna say actually before I carry on, is it the script that I'm going to be showing you now? I actually am going to put a version of that in the repository if you want to play with that yourself. Um, I've got the data downloaded locally because it takes quite a while to download because it's a large data set. But in the script that I'll share with you, it will have a function for just automatically downloading all that data. Okay. So um, the first thing I'm going to do then is I'll set up a path to the data that we're working with. So data path equals, I think I've got it in directory um, and I can check that I've got my data by I'm just going to list all the files in this directory so list dot files now earlier today I was trying to do this and um, I accidentally thought I deleted all the data which was a bit of a shock so hopefully this time it will show up 
Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, yes. Yeah. So um, this is just listing all the files in this directory. So one thing to note, this is partition data. So by partition, what I mean is the data has been divided up into separate kind of subfolders based on the year and the month. And then each folder's just got this single um, parquet format file in it. Okay. So I think there's about 100, yeah, 123 separate files there. So um, this is one data set um, comprised of lots of different files. So if I want to open that in Arrow, I will just use this function called open data set. So NYC taxi equals open data set. Um, I need to pass in the data path from before. And because it's partition data, I'm going to use this argument partitioning and give it the argument. I think we've got year first, don't we? Yes. And then month. Okay. So let's just take a look at this. So if I look at that object now, okay, so if I make that a little bit bigger on my screen. Okay, so this is what's known as a file system data set. Basically, it's a data set within a file system. It's telling us it's got 123 parquet files in total. Um, and here it's just got kind of the column name and the column type. Um, these data types are kind of the arrow data types, which um, there's a few more of them than our data types. And we can see that actually we've got year and month here as columns in our data. Now, when we look at the actual data, these um, actually, the, sorry, year and month aren't actually columns in our data, but because we've supplied it as partitioning, that now becomes part of our data set. Okay, so this this ran really quick, and there's actually like loads of data in this, which I'll show you um, later. And um, one of the things that Arrow does well is this thing called lazy evaluation. So basically, when we run that this open data set, it, it's setting it up so it's ready to work with it. It's not loaded into the R session. It's not loaded into memory, and that's because when when we're working with kind of Arrow data sets. Um, they're optimized to do things, I guess, in the, it won't load things and then it doesn't need to. So if we filter the data and then want to pull it into memory, it'll only read in the data that has been selected in the filter rather than all of it effectively. But for now, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to work out the mean fare, the mean taxi fare um, across all the data. So I'll just be one second, typing that all in. Now, as I just said before, um, because Arrow kind of uses a lot of this lazy evaluation, I just have to put collect at the end of these kind of code pipelines just to pull that data then into memory. Now, I'll run this and it will take a minute to run um, and you'll see why in a moment when I show you kind of the size of the data. Um, but yeah, this is scanning all of those parquet files. Um, it's using summarize, so dplyr function um, to calculate that value and that should complete shortly. Um, I'm just going to see what's next after that. But yeah, I promise it's, it's all about the size of the data. Okay, so this now looks very similar to what we'd expect if we ran something like this in dplyr. We've got the value back, the mean fare across the data is $11.80. So I keep going on about like this being a really big data set. So like, uh, you know, let, let, let's show you kind of quite how big it is. So. I'm just going to copy and paste a bit of code that I've written earlier. So basically, what is this? What this is doing is for all of the files that we kind of listed before, it's running the file.size function. And I'm just that just uses per to iterate through all the files and I'm adding them together. Okay. And then if I just do total bytes, so we need to convert it from bytes to gigabytes. So if I just do that divided by 1 billion. Okay. So yeah. That was a 39 gigabyte file, um, which, you know, on a lot of laptops, if you don't have, you know, 39 gigabytes of RAM, you just can't load that into your R session. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one of the things that, that this enables you to do. Okay. So let's just have a look at um, a few of the bits and pieces. So as much as this NYC taxi object is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an arrow object, it's a file system data set, um, we've implemented a lot of um, typical kind of base R functions to work with it. So if I want to see how many rows are in this, I can just run n row on that data set and we get this number back, which I think is like 1.5 billion rows, which for me personally, that's the biggest data set I've ever worked in within an R session. Um, 
okay and just a few other things so a lot of the features here you know we're very much implementing things and we're still in the progress of adding more and more things um one of the things that like some of our users got excited about in the last re release was the ability to degroup by and summarize so then now that will do calculations and cross the entire data set so if i do group by year and month and again, okay, if this looks like really underwhelming because this is just like what you'd write in dplyr, like that is the whole point, right? We, we want this just to be really, you know, if you've used dplyr, this code should be really, really, really familiar to you. Um, but it's actually using error under the hood um, on these huge data sets. So if I run that now, and again, we're gonna have to wait a moment because it's it's running this across this whole kind of 1.5 billion row data set. Um, I'm gonna have a quick drink while it does that. And again, I could have filtered it by something so it didn't try to kind of like calculate this across quite so many bits of my data, but it's all good. It's got a lot of rows. Nick, while it's running, there's a question from Brian there in the chat. Oh, okay. Says, is it maybe, yeah. I cannot see the chat. This is, okay. this should not be taking this long. Something has gone wrong here. Oh no. <laughs> um, this did not take this long last time I did this. Um, I cannot see the chat. Um, okay, it's, so I'll read it for you. It says, he says, is it possible to collect and return a data.table format or a table data frame? I presume that he asked that then when you, when you, when you read the data in. Yeah. At so, that step. Okay. Oh, right, okay, that's usually, there we, go. there we go. It's usually faster than that. I'm not sure what happened then. Yeah, so when you collect it into, um, that collects it into memory as a tibble. Um, you can kind of subsequently convert it into other formats if that's what you want. But yeah, collect um, pulls it in as a, or is it as a data frame? Um, no, it is, it, no, it is as a tibble, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so that, that, that's the first thing that I wanted to run as a demo. Okay, so if we just nip back to the slide. Okay, so um, I guess the next thing that I want to show is being able to use all these tidyverse functions that you might, you know, if you use dplyr, you might already use in your date pipelines. Um, and again, we've created bindings between these kind of really fast arrow C++ functions and these tidyverse functions now. Um, this, again, the stuff I'm about to demonstrate, um, I'm just going to use a smaller data set because it's a bit quicker and, and easier to do so. And with this particular analysis, you know what, I would just use the original Tidyverse stuff. But the point here, here is to show you this functionality scales. You can do this kind of thing on these massive data sets. And that is kind of what we're enabling here. Um, so yeah, so for this second demo, I, I wanted to, I, I found this really cool data set. Um, I'm a fan of the TV show, The Office, um, the US version. It's one of the few TV shows that's been copied and done a better version of. Um, and um, I found this really cool data set looking at um, lines from the script in that. So, um, and also it's, um, it's a TV show that this particular, um, the same picture meme comes from. So I was gonna use, I decided to use that as an example. So if we switch back over to our studio. Okay, so again, I mean, I don't need to, obviously if I'm using the same session, I don't need to actually load these in now. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual data set first. So, okay, so the package is called Shroot after the name of one of the, the characters in the TV show, Dwight Shroot. Okay, so this data set, so it's the entire strip, script transit, yeah, transcriptions from the office. Um, it's a tibble, so it's 55,130 observations. Not really, you know, it's not, it's not a particularly large data set. Um, it's got data about kind of, you know, the, the season, the episode, um, and the kind of interesting bit is the text, the words spoken by that actor. So I've just saved this um, in a directory called transcripts. And I've just, I, I just was playing around with it. So I've saved it actually separately as some partition data divided by season. So I'm just gonna load that now. So, okay, so if we just take a look at the object, Okay, so here you see we've got file system data set with nine parquet files. Um, again, it's got the columns and the data types of the different 
um, of the different columns there. So um, I guess then the first thing that I might want to do um, with this, let's ask a question about the data. So um, we might want to know which character in the show has got the most lines. So if I take that data set and we'll group it by the character column, because that's the character that spoke the line. Um, I'm going to summarize. Okay, so because we've got one, each row represents a line spoken by a character. Therefore, if we if we call the end function, that is going to count as how many um, lines each character has. And if I arrange that by that line column descending, um, and then collect that again, you know, it's quite very dplyr syntax. So again, exactly what you'd expect if you're doing this in dplyr. We've got this table, we can see that, okay, that character's got that many lines, et cetera, et cetera, going through. Okay. Um, so I mentioned kind of this tidyverse functionality. So let's give you an example of that now. So um, if you're a fan of The Office, you might know that one of the characters, Dwight, um, his family is involved in beetroot farming, um, and he talks quite a bit about beets. So let's say if we wanted to know in which kind of, which lines um, are beets mentioned in the show. So let's do that now. The beats, we're going to take uh, the office and then we are going to filter. So this is a function from the string R package called str detect. And again, because we've written bindings for it now, even though this is an arrow data set, we can use the sort of arrow equivalent of this. So we want to see in the text column, let's just filter to get the rows that have the word beats in them. Okay. So I've, I've just assigned that to this because I've, I've not collected that quite yet. So I just want to show you when I said we've got bindings, what I meant by that is if we look at this object now, um, this again is a file system data set and we've got all our columns, but now it's got this little bit of information here about the filter that we've applied. So in arrow C++, the actual equivalent of str detect is actually match substring regex. So it's just what it's called in the C++ library. But the point here is you don't have to know about that. You can just use, you know, the functionality from, sorry, the function name from string R to call it like this. And under the hood, it'll just translate it into the kind of arrow C++ function that you need. Okay, so now if I just run collect on that, oh no, sorry, I need to run it on the object underneath. And it collects, in fact, let's just, let's select just the text column. Okay, so in there we have, I, I was quite surprised to see this, if anybody's seen the office, it's only actually 16 lines in the whole show about people talking about beats. So um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a strange, strange topic in the show. Okay. So I um, just wanted to, okay, so I just wanted to play around with this data set now and just ask a few more questions about the data and um, just using kind of arrow functionality. So let's have a look what's next. Okay, yeah, so um, if you remember before, I mentioned the, the same picture meme, and this is actually from an episode of The Office. So now let's see what episode that meme is actually from. Okay, if I just do the office and then filter that and now so before I use str detect and um, which is a string R function but we've also implemented bindings to um, base our functions so there's grep or grep l which is the, the one that does true or false um, values to return now I know it's it's arguments the opposite way round to string detect so it's um, grep l the thing we're looking for so the same picture in the text column now um, again, let's just actually, let's, if I run that now, so you see it's also matched to the um, map to the match substring regex um, function um, under the hood. And now if I run collect on that, we can find that it is season seven, episode 25, in which Pam says the same picture and that meme was kind of generated from. Okay. Um, I guess my other example, um, was just, I guess it doesn't quite fit, but I'll kind of run it anyway. Just another question I wanted to ask about the data. I wanted to do a bit of plotting. And I guess what I wanted to kind of just show was that you can take your kind of like, you know, your, your data pipes, just the same with dplyr, 
um, but with arrow objects at the start and put it into like your typical analytics pipeline. So I'm going to cheat a bit and copy and paste rather than typing this out. So this is just a function that takes data and plots it. I'll, I'll show you the plot in a minute. Um, now I'm just going to paste some things in and I'll walk through it one bit at a time. So I want to have, um, I want to do the count of lines per character, but I also want to use the character's full name. So I've created this, this data set um, that's got the full name and the surname of the characters. So um, in version six of Arrow that was released re recently, we've added this ability to join. So now I can use that functionality. Um, so from here down to about here, before we do the collect, that's all running in Arrow. And then we just collect the data, pipe it into the plot data function. So just for a bit of, sorry, for a bit of context about what's going on here. Um, I want to ask the question, how many lines does each character have in each season? So I'm going to group my data by season and character, summarize by just counting the number of line, rows they have, join it with my character full names table so I can have the full names on my labels. I'm just going to do a bit of kind of messing around with um, just how that's written in a column. I'm then just going to select the random, the relevant columns, plot it into R now that I've done all my data manipulation and plot it. And then, so we can see, you know, some characters have different paths throughout the season. Some get more popular and some get less popular. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate the thing of kind of using Arrow within kind of existing data pipelines. So yeah, just to reiterate the point from before, if that seems really underwhelming, if you used to be fire in the tidyverse, that is totally the point and the intention, if that makes sense. Like underwhelming is the aim. Like we don't want, you know, kind of too many surprises really. We want this just to work for people. Okay. So I guess just to summarize really a bit about the project, if, if you're kind of familiar with it. So in version six of Arrow, um, the most recent version that was released about, I think a month and a half ago, maybe, we implemented the ability to do group, group by and summarize. Um, we also have joins, um, lots of new string parsing functions from StringR and lots of date extraction functions from LubraDate and you know, also base R things. We've now also got integration with DuckDB, so you can use that together with Arrow, which is pretty cool. Um, and in terms of going forward, um, we're looking at supporting a lot more function bindings. Um, we also want to expand and update our R documentation tutorials. Um, you know, there, there is some arrow functionality that isn't just about doing things with the fire and tidyverse um, type syntax. That's just what I've been focusing on today. But there's quite a lot of other things that can be useful. So things around data partitioning, all different kinds of things. So we want to have just more documentation tutorials about that. Um, we're trying to improve our resources for new contributors um, now that we, you know, kind of definitely want to get more people involved. Um, if you're interested in contributing to Arrow, I've actually just today tweeted um, a link to a survey that we're doing just to see what kind of, you know, people that might be interested in contributing would need um, in terms of kind of to get started on that. Um, there's lots of work on general performance and efficiency improvements. Um, also looking at things around window functions. So that's when you kind of do things like group by and then mutate and loads of other stuff. That's kind of the highlights. So um, in terms of kind of resources for using Arrow, um, there's our package down site. Um, another thing that I've been working on recently is the Apache Arrow R cookbook. So the cookbook gives almost kind of recipes. So I want a recipe for how to, I don't know, how to write partition data or how to work with this type of compression um, and things like that. So loads of stuff like that is in the cookbook. Um, and just as another thing, you know, if, if, if you use this um, and you come across any bugs or any things that aren't implemented that you'd find useful, like definitely please do open up issues on our issue tracker. Um, now, if, if you want to know more, um, there's a few other talks that I'd recommend. So if you want a kind of high level technical overview of the project, the history of it, the future directions at a really broad level, um, there's a really good talk by Wes McKinney. Um, if you want more about just underlying like how it's working, then definitely um, this talk by Neil Richardson is worth looking at. And finally, if you want a bit more on the data engineering, so you know, things like, you know, kind of the different file types we can work with and why they're good, the fact we can work with compressed data, why engineering in R is kind of kind of really enabled um, by this. And this talk by my colleague Ian Cook is definitely worth looking at. Okay. So yeah, that, that's everything from me. So yeah, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nick. Um, 
So I don't know if anyone else has questions, but I do have one. Um, you mentioned that you can uh, get data from an S3 bucket. Um, mm -hmm. If it's private, if, if the actual S3 bucket is private, you'd have to go through the authentication methods to connect first, I would assume. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I, I haven't worked a huge amount on this area of it, but I've seen work recently that's been to do with authentication and proxies and things like that. And I believe that you can, I don't know if it's, it's if you can pass set environment variables to, to, to pass in kind of if you've got a token for it or something. Um, I could definitely tell you whereabouts in the documentation is that. We've actually got a vignette on working with data in S3 okay. and that's been recently updated. So I definitely recommend checking that out and that will be in there. Cool, perfect. I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Looks like everyone's good. But for, uh, Nick, you, you mentioned that it's, it's a bit underwhelming. Uh, that's quite cool for me, but actually it seems very like magic almost, because you think yeah. that a 39 gig file is like mm -hmm. easily read or was just a couple of like a minute, right? That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's actually yeah sorry I'm it, I, I was joking about that I was yes. saying that more about the deep layer I know I, I don't mean it's <laughs> underwhelming I am excited about this stuff yes, just, yes. I, yeah <laughs> no I I, I I know what you mean but it actually feels um, a bit like magic like how is that mm. possible oh good good well I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that that point at least is is being is being made of it yeah yeah Nick I think that there's going to be as we go forward, this this sort of thing will be unavoidable. You won't be able to do your analysis with without it. Uh, you know, with all our online data sets that are far too large, and so mm. I work in spatial spatial analysis. And there, I mean, so one of my students has actually got a, a remote sensing imagery, and it also looks like that. You know, you got all the folders from the different locations, yeah. different timestamps, and you know, her bit, she was using Python, so I'm not, I couldn't, unfortunately couldn't help her immensely, but you know, that's what she needed. She needed to be able to access yeah. it without, yeah, without having to download it and check what's in it. So it's very, this is, yeah, this is very, very cool. I'm excited. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Have you worked with other implementations of the Arrow, uh, like Apache um, Arrow? I've 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 done a little bit of work with the C++, but um, very, very minor because it, it's just such a different way of approaching things to kind of, you know, the, the R package does have some C++ in. Um, so I've got a vague passing understanding of some of the C++, but it's quite a quite a sizable library. Um, so um, not a huge amount. I mean, one of the really interesting things actually about working on a project where we have this shared underlying implementation is recently I was looking at implementing, I think it was dplyr's um, bind rows where you can combine different tables together. Mm -hmm. And it needs a bit of work for me to do on the C++ side to do it. But because we've got all these different implementations together, I actually went and looked at how PyArrow had done it to seek inspiration. So it's, it's there's these really weird, cool things about working in, in this kind of project that's got all these different languages, but based like a lot based around the same thing. It's very cool. Very, very cool. I agree. Okay, cool. Thanks again, Nick. If anyone has any questions, going, going, you're welcome to also unmute and ask your question. But or comment. I will close the meetup um, and let everyone get to their day, evening, or whatever mm. time zone they're in. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so San Marie said she can't wait to try it. And thank you, Nick. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It's, it's been really great to, to come here. So thank you. Thank cool. you, Nick. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, also for joining. And hopefully we'll have one more before the end of the year. And hope to see you there. <laughs> Watch space. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.